When we think of iconic figures like Mahatma Gandhi, we often recall their great deeds and the positive impact they had on society. However, delving deeper into their lives reveals a more complex reality. Just like Gandhi, many renowned historical figures harbor aspects of their character that paint a darker picture. Here are the top 20 respected historical figures who were actually terrible people. You'll be shocked to see their shady sides. Number 20. Henry Ford Henry Ford, renowned as one of America's most prolific entrepreneurs and innovators, left an indelible mark on the world through his revolutionary contributions. Notably, he democratized transportation by making cars accessible to the masses and transformed industrial practices with the introduction of the moving assembly line. However, alongside his entrepreneurial achievements, Ford harbored deeply ingrained racist sentiments, particularly towards Jewish people. Despite his immense success, Ford's anti-Semitic views were glaringly apparent. In 1918, he purchased the Dearborn Independent newspaper, which became a platform for disseminating his hateful rhetoric against Jews. This culminated in the publication of The International Jew, The World's Foremost Problem, a collection of anti-Semitic articles that gained widespread circulation. The impact of Ford's bigotry extended beyond American borders, influencing none other than Adolf Hitler himself. Hitler openly admired Ford, considering him an inspiration and even prominently displaying his portrait in his office. In Mein Kampf, Hitler lauded Ford as a lone figure resisting Jewish influence in America. Ford's collaboration with Nazi Germany further underscores the extent of his complicity. Despite the atrocities committed by the regime, Ford Motor Company continued doing business with Nazi Germany contributing to the production of engines used in warfare against American soldiers. Number 19. Thomas Edison Thomas Edison was a famous inventor known for making lots of things. He had more than a thousand patents, which means he officially owned ideas for new inventions. His work really changed how we use electricity and communicate with each other. Thanks to him, we have things like sound recording and movies, which completely changed how we entertain ourselves. However, Alongside his innovative achievements, Edison's legacy is tarnished by his less admirable traits. He remains one of the respected historical figures who were actually terrible people. Edison was widely recognized for his inventions, but his true self was a cunning businessman who frequently put his own interests and power ahead of the integrity and advancement of science. His handling of the great inventor Nikola Tesla is a striking illustration of this. Additionally, Edison engaged in a bitter feud with fellow inventor George Westinghouse, whose company championed alternating current AC technology, in contrast to Edison's direct current DC machines. In a desperate attempt to discredit AC, Edison launched a smear campaign, falsely asserting its dangers. Resorting to grotesque theatrics, he orchestrated public demonstrations where animals, including dogs, horses, cattle, and even an elephant named Topsy, were electrocuted. Number 18. Mahatma Gandhi Mahatma Gandhi, arguably one of the most peaceful people in history, faced issues far more serious than the British colonial government in India. Jad Adams, a biography of Gandhi, claims that Gandhi was a sexual addict who would even leave his dying father's side to have sex with his wife. At the age of 15, he was bereaved of his father, and his sadness led him to permanently give up on lustful love. He formally vowed to remain chaste at the age of 38, but he frequently tested it in strange and creepy ways. His favorite way was to share a naked bathroom with women. Gandhi was seen sleeping in the nude with girls half his age, occasionally even more than one at once. Naturally, he believed that this conduct was unacceptable for others and that Indians should always maintain strict virginity, even to the point of never getting married. They should never have sex with their husbands if they are forced to be married. In the meantime, his married followers were kept apart in his compounds, instructed not to have sex, and advised to take cold baths if they felt their mojo building. That's the true Gandhi. Fantastic for Indian freedom. Not so good for hanging out with young women. Number 17. Caravaggio Despite being revered as a prominent Renaissance artist, Caravaggio's legacy is marred by a dark episode of violence. In 2002, an expose shed light on the motive behind Caravaggio's act of murder against Ranuccio Tomassoni. 
While the incident in 1606 was previously attributed to a dispute over a tennis match, new evidence reveals a more sinister motive revolving around a woman, specifically a prostitute named Filide Melandroni. As the story goes, Caravaggio invited Filide Melandroni for a painting session and developed feelings for her. However, Filide was under the control of Tomassoni, her pimp, which incited Caravaggio's ire. Determined to defend her honor, Caravaggio engaged in a violent confrontation with Tomassoni. Tragically, Caravaggio's attempt to castrate Tomassoni went awry, as he inadvertently severed his opponent's femoral artery, leading to his fatal bleeding. Number 16. Pablo Picasso. Pablo Picasso's granddaughter Marina once said that her grandfather, the artist, yearned for the blood of people who loved him. Picasso, a legendary artist, changed the course of modern art with his groundbreaking creations. But even in the midst of his creative genius, he displayed an unsettling tendency toward misogyny. Picasso publicly supported these beliefs, calling women machines for suffering. By making sure his children and their spouses were financially dependent on him, he was able to keep control over them. Picasso purposefully punished Marina and her drunken mother by keeping them in poverty after their parents divorced. Picasso had numerous relationships with people, thus being around him frequently meant seeing his promiscuity. Picasso claimed to view women as either goddesses or doormats, although his behaviors frequently suggested a preference for the latter. Number 15. Queen Victoria. Queen Victoria, despite being the matriarch of a large royal family, displayed a distinct lack of maternal instinct. Her disdain for pregnancy was evident, as it impeded her ability to govern, and she struggled with postnatal depression, as noted by the BBC. In her personal writings, Victoria candidly expressed her aversion to the appearance of babies, a sentiment that further distanced her from traditional notions of motherhood. Unfortunately, Victoria's ambivalence towards motherhood extended to her interactions with her children. Remarkably, she exhibited the harshest treatment towards the child who would eventually ascend the throne as Edward VIII. Victoria and her late husband, Prince Albert, viewed Edward's difficulties with their rigorous educational standards as a profound disappointment. Reports from the BBC suggest that Victoria even ridiculed Edward's appearance and intelligence, exacerbating the strained relationship between mother and son. Tragically, Victoria's grief over Albert's death led her to blame Edward, further straining their already fragile bond. Victoria's parenting style was characterized by either neglect or excessive control. She imposed strict limitations on her children, particularly her youngest daughter, Beatrice, whom she forbade from marrying. When Beatrice defied her wishes, Victoria severed communication and compelled the newlyweds to reside with her. Furthermore, Victoria maintained a network of spies to monitor her children's activities, intervened in their parenting decisions, and expressed disdain towards her daughter Vicky's pregnancy. Number 14. Strom Thurmond Strom Thurmond, a native of South Carolina, was the senator from the United States with the longest tenure. But despite the fact that a large number of his supporters adored him, he held some appalling beliefs regarding race. Thurmond garnered more than a million votes in his 1948 presidential campaign, which was based on a segregationist and state's rights platform. And after he was in the Senate, he kept up his opposition to equality. Thurmond filibustered against President Eisenhower's 1957 proposals for several fundamental civil rights measures for more than 24 hours, which is still the longest speech in Senate history. However, Thurmond's double standard of hypocrisy set him apart from nearly all other racists. He became pregnant at the age of 22 with a 16-year-old black domestic helper. Essie Mae Washington Williams, his daughter, was totally disregarded by him until she was 16, at which point he began occasionally giving her money. He did this in part to keep her silent because he was aware that revelation could endanger his political future. Number 13. Thomas Jefferson Slavery, often referred to as America's original sin, casts a dark shadow on the legacy of founding father Thomas Jefferson. Despite his public stance against slavery, Jefferson's personal actions contradicted his purported beliefs as he owned over 600 individuals in bondage. 
Jefferson's dependence on enslaved labor was integral to his rise as a prominent political figure, providing him with the resources necessary for his aspirations. Despite his professed opposition to slavery, he only emancipated seven individuals, all of whom shared a familial connection to Sally Hemings. Sally Hemings, an enslaved woman, holds a significant place in Jefferson's history, as historians believe she bore six children fathered by him. When it comes to moral depravity, it is important to remember that she was only 14 years old when their alleged physical relationship started. On top of being enslaved and thus legally powerless to reject any advances from her master, he was in his 40s, a widower, and, incidentally, the half-sister of Sally Hemings from his late wife. In case you didn't realize, this gets even more unpleasant. Despite being a founding father of America, Jefferson's misuse of authority and owning slaves are as significant as his achievements. Number 12. Charlie Chaplin In actual life, Charlie Chaplin, the adored little tramp, wasn't nearly as silly. He was, in fact, blatantly predatory, especially toward teenage girls. When he married two of his four wives, they were both younger than 18. Although they started dating when she was 17, Una O'Neill was 18 when they got married, and he was in his 50s. Additionally, Paulette Goddard was only 22 when they started dating, but she had lied to Chaplin, who believed she was 17, about her age when they got married. If marrying young girls alone wasn't shady enough, what about the nasty treatment he gave them? Consider his first wife, Mildred Harris, whom he wed at the age of 16, mistaking her for a pregnant woman. When she began receiving offers for movies, Chaplin didn't encourage her because he believed she was too young to be truly talented. Young for anything else, but not too young for him to romance, of course. And then there's Lita Gray, whose 1927 divorce papers detailed the mistreatment she endured at the hands of Chaplin. When Gray was 16, the 35-year-old Chaplin became pregnant and promptly recommended an abortion. When that failed, he married her, but mistreated her in the marriage. The LA Times claims that he called her lowly born and greedy, cheated on her with other young actresses, neglected their kids, and demanded revolting, degrading, and offensive acts in the bedroom, some of which were against the law in California at the time. Number 11, Mother Teresa. Critiquing the legacy of Saint Teresa, formerly known as Mother Teresa, may seem sacrilegious given her canonization in 2016. Revered for her purported tireless efforts in aiding the impoverished and infirm, the reality of her motives paints a more nuanced picture, one characterized by self-interest rather than selflessness. Contrary to the saintly image cultivated around Mother Teresa, reports suggest that her actions were driven more by a desire to bolster the ranks of her own religion rather than alleviate suffering. Shockingly, the missions she established purportedly offered minimal assistance to the destitute and sick. These facilities often lacked essential resources, such as medical personnel, adequate food, and pain relief, resulting in substandard care for those in need. Remarkably, Mother Teresa espoused a disturbing philosophy that found beauty in the suffering of the poor, likening it to Christ's passion and suggesting that it contributed to a holier world. Her own privileged status, however, afforded her access to ample medical treatment when necessary, highlighting a stark contrast between her rhetoric and personal reality. Number 10. Charles Dickens While Hollywood may have painted a rosy picture of beloved author Charles Dickens, the reality of his personal life reveals a much darker tale, akin to that of his famous miserly character Scrooge. Dickens entered into matrimony with Catherine Hogarth, the daughter of his editor, George Hogarth, in 1833, and together they welcomed ten children into the world. However, contrary to societal expectations, Dickens harbored disdain for parenthood, viewing children as costly burdens. Remarkably, he shifted the blame for their large family onto Catherine, absolving himself of responsibility. By the 1850s, Dickens's discontent with his domestic life manifested in extramarital affairs. Initially attempting to rekindle a previous romance, he ultimately found solace in the arms of 18-year-old actress Ellen Ternan. Dickens's callousness reached new depths when he sought to have Catherine institutionalized under false pretenses, 
a cruel scheme that thankfully failed as Catherine maintained her mental faculties. Upon discovering her husband's infidelity, Catherine courageously separated from Dickens, retreating to the care of family members. Meanwhile, it's speculated that Ternan clandestinely moved in with Dickens, further complicating an already tumultuous situation. Number 9. Albert Einstein While Albert Einstein's name is synonymous with groundbreaking discoveries in the realm of physics, his personal life was far from harmonious. Despite his mastery of relativity, Einstein's expertise in relationships left much to be desired, as evidenced by his tumultuous marriage to his first wife, Mileva Marek. Their initial courtship seemed straight out of a romantic screenplay, two young intellectuals meeting in college, with Mileva being the sole female physics student. They fell deeply in love, started a family, and everything appeared idyllic. However, cracks began to show in their relationship in 1912, when Einstein embarked on an affair with his cousin, Elsa. In private correspondence, he callously referred to Marek as an employee whom I cannot fire, revealing the deterioration of their marital bond. In July 1904s, Einstein issued Marek a list of demands, reducing their relationship to one of domestic servitude, devoid of affection. The ensuing separation took a toll on Marek, leading to a mental breakdown. Einstein swiftly moved on, marrying Elsa in 1919, the same year his theory of general relativity revolutionized physics. Yet his infidelity persisted throughout his second marriage. The repercussions of Einstein's tumultuous personal life extended beyond his own relationships. Marek, once a promising physicist, saw her career stifled by societal expectations of a wife's role in marriage. Forced to prioritize domestic duties over her scientific pursuits, she abandoned her research endeavors. Some scholars speculate that Marek played a significant role in Einstein's work behind the scenes, despite her husband claiming sole credit for their collaborative efforts. Number 8. Woodrow Wilson Woodrow Wilson occupies a significant place in American history as a champion of progressive ideals, credited with landmark legislative achievements such as the enactment of the first child labor laws, the establishment of the Federal Trade Commission, and the codification of the eight-hour workday. His efforts also extended to shoring up antitrust laws and facilitating the end of World War I, while his stance on women's suffrage, though not outright supportive, contributed to its eventual realization. Indeed, within the realm of progressive politics, Wilson's contributions are undeniable, assuming, of course, you were white. Regrettably, Wilson's legacy is marred by his unapologetic racism, evident in his writings and policies. In his work, A History of the American People, Wilson denigrated black Americans, dismissing them as an ignorant and inferior race and decrying emancipation as a societal menace. As president, he actively promoted racial segregation within the federal government, orchestrating the dismissal of black supervisors and their replacement with white counterparts. Wilson's discriminatory actions extended beyond domestic borders. During the post-war Versailles conference, he vehemently opposed a proposal for racial equality within the League of Nations, perpetuating racism on a global scale. Additionally, Wilson's public endorsement of the Ku Klux Klan exacerbated racial tensions nationwide, with his private screening of the pro-Klan film The Birth of a Nation at the White House, serving as a chilling testament to his support for the organization. His quote featured in the film, celebrating the Klan as a protector of the Southern country, further underscored his complicity in institutionalizing racism. Number 7. Coco Chanel Coco Chanel stands as an iconic figure in the realm of fashion, her eponymous brand synonymous with timeless elegance and sophistication. Yet behind the glitz and glamour lies a controversial tale woven with intrigue and betrayal. Chanel, known for her penchant for the finer things in life, moved effortlessly within elite circles, mingling with British aristocrats, French politicians, and notably German military officers during the tumultuous era of Nazi occupation in Paris. In a bizarre twist, Nazi attire found its place in high fashion, blurring the lines between couture and collaboration. As war ravaged Europe, Chanel found refuge in the opulent confines of the Paris Ritz, a sanctuary that inadvertently became a hub for German officers. 
Rumors abound that one such officer shared more than just Chanel's address, hinting at a dubious intimacy that scandalized the era. Yet it wasn't merely a matter of proximity. Recently declassified documents suggest Chanel's covert role as a Nazi operative, utilizing her influence to serve the Reich's interests. The extent of Chanel's complicity extended beyond espionage. Leveraging Nazi anti-Semitic laws, she ruthlessly targeted Jewish business partners, exploiting the oppressive regime to further her own agenda. When the tides of war shifted and the Nazis retreated from Paris, Chanel fled to Switzerland, evading prosecution as a collaborator. Remarkably, Chanel escaped the consequences of her actions largely unscathed. Speculation abounds that her connections, notably her purported friendship with Winston Churchill, shielded her from accountability, perhaps to prevent her from divulging incriminating secrets about other suspected collaborators within the British elite. Number 6. Teddy Roosevelt Theodore Roosevelt stands tall on Mount Rushmore, nestled between Thomas Jefferson and Abraham Lincoln, a testament to the reverence Americans hold for the president affectionately known as Teddy. His legacy is undeniably vast and impactful. He championed food and drug safety regulations, pioneered environmental conservation in American politics, instituted the first workers' compensation laws, initiated the construction of the Panama Canal, enacted legislation to shield workers from corporate exploitation, and even earned a Nobel Peace Prize for his efforts. Undoubtedly, Roosevelt left an indelible mark on American history with his myriad accomplishments. However, it's essential to recognize the complexities of Roosevelt's character and ideology. Despite his remarkable achievements, he harbored unapologetically nationalist, imperialist, and racist beliefs. Roosevelt firmly believed in the inherent superiority of the Western world and endorsed the notion that white people had the right to seize whatever they desired. In his writings, he dismissed indigenous peoples as scattered savage tribes advocating for the expansion of American civilization at any cost. Roosevelt's fervent conviction in America's supremacy fueled his advocacy for overseas expansion. Serving as both Secretary of the Navy and later as President, he fervently supported the acquisition of territories such as the Philippines, obtained after the Spanish-American War of 1898. His zealous endorsement of military force in subduing Filipino resistance led to a brutal conflict, resulting in untold atrocities and the loss of countless Filipino lives over a protracted 14-year war, often overlooked in historical discourse. Before we move on, here's today's subscribers' pick on respected historical figures who were actually terrible people. Let's take a closer look at this image featuring Walt Disney, renowned for his groundbreaking achievements, like introducing the use of the three-color process in animation for motion pictures. However, despite his accomplishments, Walt Disney had a darker side, as Neil Gabler reveals in his biography, Walt Disney, The Triumph of the American Imagination. It's not just about allowing controversial films like Song of the South to be made. Reports suggest that Disney made racially offensive remarks, such as calling the Seven Dwarves a N-word pile, which is not only offensive, but also absurd. Additionally, he used derogatory language like pickaninny when referring to black children in meetings. Furthermore, Disney had issues with women. Ward Kimball, a Disney associate, once remarked, he didn't trust women or cats. This distrust was evident in a letter Disney wrote to Mary Ford, a woman applying for a job as an animator. He bluntly rejected her application solely because of her gender, stating that creative work was the domain of young men. The letterhead featuring Snow White and the Seven Dwarves seemed to mock her aspirations. Now, we'd like to hear your thoughts. Please share them in the comments section below. Number 5. Rolled Doll Children all throughout the world have admired Rolled Doll's wonderful stories for years. Not only are his characters adored, but many of them are well known. Sadly, Dahl's dark humor and the comedic violence that so many of us found enjoyable were actually reflections of something far deeper and more serious within. The BBC claims that Willy Wonka's creator was such a bully that his wife dubbed him Rolled the Rotten. Not only was he a jerk, but he also continuously cheated on her, even when she was recuperating from a stroke and even with her best friend. Additionally, he had to make revisions to a number of stories, such as Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and the BFG, 
since they featured racist caricatures and stereotypes. Dahl stated, I altered the book because I didn't realize my portrayal of the Oompa Loompas was racist, but the NAACP and others did. Dahl claimed such were simply mistakes, and his wife claimed Charlie was even meant to be darker skinned than white. However, Dahl never attempted to disguise his profound anti-Semitism, and he even made an oblique accusation against Jews by stating, Hitler didn't just pick on them for no reason. Number 4. Barnum. Phineas Taylor. Barnum served as the world's ringmaster for decades, as fans of the movie The Greatest Showman will recall. However, the film completely ignored the unsettling truth that his entertainment empire was founded on the frequently ruthless exploitation of his employees, some of whom were treated like slaves. It's true that Barnum's most ruthless display was also his first. At the start of his career, he leased an old slave named Joyce Heth, whom he claimed to be the 160-year-old former nurse of George Washington. In 1836, after Heth passed away, Barnum held a public autopsy of her corpse in a New York tavern, charging 50 cents for each viewer. Smithsonian Magazine claims that later in life, Barnum attempted to change the course of history by asserting that he was not a racist. However, as noted by Barnum historian Benjamin Rice, you never know if that's part of the act with Barnum. Number 3. John F. Kennedy The 35th President of the United States, John F. Kennedy, is still a fascinating figure to this day because of his political savvy and charisma. However, his romantic involvement and personal relationships have also received attention, which has complicated his legacy further. Kennedy's 1923 marriage to Jacqueline Bouvier was heralded as the combination of two elegant and refined people, the pinnacle of the golden pair. However, JFK's repeated infidelity put a shadow over their union, concealing a complicated marriage behind their public persona. Additional layers of mystery were created by Jackie's struggles to reconcile her husband's actions with their public persona. Kennedy's controversial history has become irrevocably marked by his high-profile affairs with women, including Marilyn Monroe, Judith Campbell Exner, and others associated with the entertainment and political industries. His charisma and charm influenced his personal connections and left a lasting impression on everyone he came into contact with, even outside of the political sphere. Kennedy's love relationships did not, however, come without political repercussions. The complex interactions between his personal life and public persona were brought to light by the perception that certain of his connections constituted security threats or possible sources of scandal that might have jeopardized his administration. Kennedy's romantic history, however, offers more than simply intrigue and scandal. It gives us a sophisticated view of a leader whose private life was as fascinating as his political career, revealing the man behind the public image. Number 2. Che Guevara. It's ironic that millions of people find inspiration in Che Guevara's image, as the charismatic warrior who gave his life to fight against imperialists is likely to murder most of the people who wear his face on a t-shirt. Guevara advocated bloodshed, entirely at odds with other revolutionary leaders like Gandhi and Martin Luther King Jr. He stated in his message to the Tricontinental that hatred as an element of struggle, unwavering hatred for the enemy, which pushes a human being beyond his natural limitations and turns him into an effective, violent, selective, and cold-blooded killing machine, was necessary for a successful revolution. His policies were also homophobic and racist. The revolution was exclusively for his people. It wasn't for the people as a whole. Death was the penalty for anyone who disobeyed him. Following the revolution, he and Fidel Castro constructed work and concentration camps in Cuba for individuals who needed to change their anti-social behavior, such as homosexuals, Afro-Cuban priests, and capitalists. Chi's instructions for establishing the new government in Cuba were straightforward. If in doubt, murder him. Number 1. Winnie Mandela Winnie and Nelson Mandela's marriage held together for over 30 years during his incarceration, but it broke down in 1996 after it was discovered that she had an affair with a younger bodyguard. Like her husband, Winnie was a fighter, earning the title Mother of the Nation. However, she engaged in several extremely contentious actions. She may have ordered a necklacing, the act of wrapping a burning automobile tire around someone's neck, 
if she thought that person was betraying the cause. In the end, Winnie Mandela was found guilty of fraud, assault, and kidnapping. Additionally, she was fired for disobedience after joining the administration as a deputy minister. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.